Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is one of the four main actors on the hit TV show, Magnum P.I. He is Stephen Hill, and today we are going beyond acting. Hey, Stephen, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for having me. Stephen, I want to ask you, what are some of the best parts of being an actor? Uh, for me, one of the best parts is uh, being able to step into roles that are beyond yourself. You know, I'm I'm an I'm an actor, uh, so I get to be a, a baseball player. I get to be a uh, person in the military. I get to be a father. And I'm, I'm none of these things in actual real life, but I get to explore those things and kind of get my get a taste of it and get my feet wet. <laughs> Now, now, Stephen, how did you get that passion for acting? I mean, when did it all start? Uh, it started in college for me. Um, well, actually, I, I, I didn't know I wanted to act. I, didn't, I wasn't being guided in that way. I was acting my whole life. I, you know, family and friends came over. I was always performing for them. Um, but it wasn't until college when I started modeling for a, uh, a company and um, like a hip hop clothing brand. And they put me in all of these magazines when I was in college. And then I graduated and I was selling copiers for Xerox. And then my mother passed away. And I told myself, I said, you know, I wanna be able to do something that I truly enjoy doing. And I had recently started taking acting classes and I really loved it. And uh, the passion just kept growing. And uh, I, I, I stuck it out after my mother passed away. Mm -hmm. Now, Stephen, what what are the what are the toughest parts of being an actor? Um, staying in it when you are dealing with rejection on a daily basis um, and you don't realize just how much that rejection starts to take a toll on your like self-esteem. Um, like so for me. I was maybe 15 years before I got my big break, you know, actually working on Magna PI was a, a huge break for me. Um, and it took about 15 years for me to book this job. And there were a few times where I wanted to quit. And I, and I would say I quit for about five, five days or so each time. And it was after huge disappointments. Like I was, uh, I had done a documentary as Jackie Robinson and when the film 42 was announced and they were looking for their Jackie Robinson, I just knew it was going to be my big shot. And uh, I didn't even get an audition. And, by, you know, and I had actually taken my 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 press kit to Jackie Robinson's wife. I had done everything that I could to, to get that audition and I didn't get the audition. And I just felt like this industry was so unfair. So I quit for about five to 10 days. I quit. And I thought about it and I said, wow, wait a minute, I'm going to quit. Jackie Robinson didn't get to quit. You know, all that he went through, he couldn't quit. Um, and I'm going to be, I'm going to quit what I'm passionate about just because I can't portray his life. I said, no, I got, I got to keep going. So I kept going. Well, you're so right about Jackie Robinson, not quitting. And and Stephen, the original TC, Roger E. Mosley, okay, you do such a great job playing TC on the new Magnum. How, how was it getting Roger's approval and blessing and becoming friends with him and then acting with him on the new Magnum? Well, you know, I didn't get his blessing right away. I would say I did get his blessing, but I didn't get his support right away. Um, and sometimes the 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 older guys uh, that have fought so hard for for that torch that they, they they're carrying, they want to make sure that they're giving it to the to the right person. 
you know, so they make you earn it a little bit. And uh, I called them. I reached out to them. And I said, uh, Mr. Mosley, how you doing? I'm Stephen Hill. I'm, you know, as you know, I'm, I'm going to be playing the, the new uh, the new TC. And he, I, I said, I would love any advice that you have for me. And he said, I don't have no advice for you. <laughs> he said, he said, uh, he said, you don't even know if you got a show yet. He said, let me, he could call me back when you get season two. Right. And, and, you know, he didn't make, he didn't make me wait that long, but he did make me sweat a little bit. And uh, I called him back and not only did he support me in the show, he ended up being on the show two times. Well, I love hearing that. Yeah. You have to earn his trust and respect there. And I want to ask you about being part of the core four as like, as I like to say it. Mm -hmm. um, you're one of the main actors along with Jay Hernandez and Perdita Weeks and Zach Knighton. Mm -hmm. Why did the four of you work so well together? Um, we work really well together because being here in Hawaii is almost like going away to college, right? Um, if I were, if we were shooting the show in LA or New York, um, after work for the day, we would all just disperse and go back to our, our, our neighborhoods. But here we go back to the same neighborhood, sometimes even the same building, you know, and for the first, I want to say three, four years here, I could zip line. We could all zip line to each other's buildings. That's how close we were. Uh, a Amy Hill is another uh, actor on the show. We were in the same building for two years, you know, so uh, that means a lot of barbecues together, a lot of dinners together. Uh, when I first got here, I did not have the cash to move into a place for myself. I needed to get that first check rolling. And Jay was like, hey, brother, you know, I got a, I got a, a spare room. And uh, he let me stay in the spare room for the first three or four weeks. So me, him, uh, and Zach Knighton, we all got really close. And then Purdy was kind of like slow to get too close, you know, because it's intimidating, a, a house full of guys, you know. But now then she started coming over and we all got close and we were like a very tight knit. We were basically like a team. Oh, I love hearing that. And you mentioned Amy Hill and then Tim Kang. Uh, so now you uh, with with that core of actors, mm -hmm. you guys make such a great team together. And why why do you think Magnum P.I. is having success now in season five? Um, well, there's there's a spirit here, you know, that, that you know, they call it that spirit of Aloha. And even if you don't want to have it, it's very infectious and it gets to you. And in, 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 uh, that that Ohana, you know, even our fans call us Ohana. Right. We've like taught the world what the word Ohana means. And so we have this really close family. And honestly, when you, we've suffered a great defeat, you know, we, we were, uh, we were canceled, right? A show got canceled. And, you know, sometimes that, that setback is just a, a, a setup for a greater success. So I think our writers, ourselves, we've all, we were like, oh, okay. Oh, y'all want to cancel us? Okay. So our writers are going crazy and, and they're, they're really, really putting in extra work on these scripts and these characters. So we're doing um, a fantastic job this season. No, I really <laughs> love the writing. I, I love the dynamics. And yeah. Stephen, I want to ask you about my books. You, I know you read the first book, Beyond the Lines. And, you know, I talk about welcoming adversity and dealing with challenges. And you are somebody that truly goes beyond the lines. And you've created... And you strive for this superior culture of excellence that I talk about. What are some things that stood out to you in the book? Um, well, what stood out to me is just the uh, awesome amount of support and uh, uh, respect that you've given to the people that you've coached and, and your students over the years. Um, and in my high school, Willingboro High, which I'm representing here, uh, we actually have a, a standard of excellence there as well. Um, we had Carl Lewis was one of our famous graduates of Willingboro High, his sister. Um, and, and so we're really well known for track, track and field. Pretty good football team as well, but our track and field program in Willingboro is, uh, 
is second to none on the East Coast. So um, with that being said, I've been around great coaches like yourself. Uh, my best friend father was the head, our head football coach, uh, uh, Tyrone Belford Sr. And, you know, so, and he was also my, my African-American studies professor. So, you know, to have really great role models is important. And I saw that in your book and I, and I just know how much that actually shapes the minds of, of young uh, students. Oh, totally. You know, for 22 years, you know, trying to build these teams with, um, you know, these impressionable teenagers. So you're so right about being a role model and, and really inspiring excellence. And Stephen, I want to ask you about Zach Knighton. I mean, it seems like all of you guys are super close, but it seems like you and Zach Knighton are extra close. Tell yeah. me about Zach. Well, uh, Zach's, Zach's my buddy, you know. Um, we, uh, on a show, it's a thing, that you call it the, there's the A story, and then there's the B story, right? So the A story is typically Magnum and Higgins. They have whatever case they're working on for the week, right? Um, but Zach and I are, you know, we support their stories. But now we've gotten our own, you know, our, our B story keeps growing. So he has a child. He has a lady. Um, I have a lady. I, I've also adopted, you know. So and then we both have this business in the La Mariana. We're, we're uh, joint owners. So since we have a business together, we're always together on the show, but when then we're always together outside of the show too. So it just all looks really good on screen. No. And I really love how uh, the writers are really developing the characters of you and Zach and, and just having these different relationships. And like you said, you have that love interest and, and uh, you adopted a boy on the show and, and really just exploring these different dynamics and, Stephen, I want to ask you about Jay Hernandez. I mean, you see him on and off, you know, the set. Mm. How hard is it being a lead on a hit TV series? Oh, uh, he's um, he is inundated with uh, work on a daily basis. He works more than anyone, uh, and just underneath him is uh, Pretty the Week. So they both have to. They're on set almost every day. I work maybe three days a week, two and a half sometimes. Um, so they are, to be the lead of a show is not easy. It's not easy at all. And you have a lot of pressure on you. And on our show, the he is the title character of the show, right? It's Magnum P.I. and he plays Magnum. If it were, uh, you know, for the title of the show was four guys in Hawaii. We would all carry the the weight of that, but he carries a lot of weight because he's the lead of the show. Now, what kind of demands does he have? And and I I heard that he's also directing as well. Yeah, he's directing. Um, uh, everyone's been been getting a shot at directing. Uh, uh, Zach Knighton Knighton is actually directing his episode right now. Um, this is the first one for him and a career first for him. Uh, Jay has directed two and uh, Purdy is is uh, gearing up to direct one uh, next week. Wow, that's that's exciting that you guys can really explore more than just acting. And and Stephen, you mentioned Perdita Weeks. What what are some things that you really admire about her as an actor and as a person? Um, well, I complain about being so far away from home sometimes, you know, and uh, she's even further away from home coming out here from from England. So she's here. <clears throat> excuse me. She's here. And, uh, you know, it, it gets rough. It gets rough. So, you know, you have to adopt this family. And so she's cool with me. She's cool with Jay. She's cool with Zach. She hangs out with Zach's wife, you know, so we have to be that family for her when uh, when she can't get back to, you know, on a weekend. I could kind of go to L.A. for the weekend if I want to, but she she can't just hop back to England whenever she feels like. It. 
Now, earlier you mentioned about when the show got canceled, how did it make you feel about all of the support you guys were getting from the fans and then to also have a billboard in Times Square? Yeah. Um, so I am very uh, close to the fans, um, sometimes too close, right? I, uh, I'm always back and forth with them on the inbox. They inbox me. There's chat groups. There's, you know, so I knew about the billboard. I knew about uh, them sending like 2,000 lays to NBC. Um, so I knew um, a lot of the things that they had had planned. And I, I, was, I couldn't believe they actually did it. You know, I wasn't sure if they were going to really do it. I thought they were just talking, but they were not playing games. They they went and did it. And uh, I just didn't want to let them down. And I felt like I had so much more to give to the character. So many of us have storylines that were like just budding and we wanted to be able to explore. So we are extremely grateful and and blessed to have another season to do that. No, oh, I'm I'm so happy. I've watched every episode so far. And, you know, you mentioned about um, just that little dynamic between Jay and per Purdy or yeah. Magnum and Higgins about how they connected. They're kind of having a personal, intimate relationship on the okay. show. How uh -huh. how hard is it? Because I, it's like playing doubles in tennis. You you got to really be in sync with your partner. How hard is it for them to really have that on sh on screen chemistry? Well, I, I feel like, again, those two work the most. They have the, the most uh, dialogue with one another. So there's a in in rehearsal, you know, if you're running lines with one another and, and one they're, both of them are very talented at learning their and memorizing their lines. Uh, they're, they're the types that can kind of look at it two or three times and like, okay, I got it, right? Um, so they have that talent. And then when you put that talent with both of them together, it's like two really good tennis players uh, playing. You know, when, when, a, when a bad tennis player is playing, a really good tennis player doesn't make so, so for such a great match. But when two people are matched up equally and you know that their skill level level is very comparable. Um, it makes for a good, uh, a good volley. So they, they volley very well back and back and forth. Now, Steven, I, I say that you are local, you are local here in Hawaii. You've been here for many years now. What yeah. are some of the most fun things that you'd like to do in Hawaii and dishes that you like to eat? Oh, uh, I was going to say the fun thing I like to do is eat. I probably eat too much, <laughs> but um, uh, I do like just getting out and getting so much sun all the time. Right. Um, I love to throw a barbecue, you know, uh, for friends and family um, and uh, cooking for people. I like to see people enjoy the food that they're eating. Um if I cooked it, you know, it's a little different than just like, hey, let me let's order some food or ordering a pizza or going to a restaurant. It's really cool to like make a, a, a perfectly cooked steak and everybody. I like to do it like family style and cut it in the strips. And we all sit at the table with chopsticks and just grab pieces of steak at a time um, or salmon or something like that, which I think I'm actually going to do that today for uh, my father's one of my father's best friends pretty much an uncle to me. He's in town, so I'm going to cook for him and uh, and the three people that he's with. But, um, yeah, I like to do that. But food-wise, you know, for the locals, I love the pancakes here because, you know, all the baked goods at, like, Lily Hot Bakery and stuff, that they start, everything's made from scratch. And so baked goods are great, so I love pancakes. And uh, uh, everybody's surprised when I tell them that I really like the poi and the lomi lomi salmon. I got to have them together, though. I got to have them together. Just poi by itself, I'm not super fan of it, but if it has the lomi, lomi salmon in there, I love it. <laughs> you got, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. You got to have the poi with the lomi lomi salmon. And, yeah, yeah. and Stephen, <laughs> maintaining balance for everybody. I mean, you, you guys work so hard at what you do, and maintaining balance is really important. What do you do to really keep up your health and fitness? Uh, I, 
I trained um, Eido, have not been doing it the way I want to be doing it. Um, and also uh, Qigong. Um, and then I just like to just go for runs and, and hit up the gym. I go to uh, the BJ Penn um, uh, gym here. Sometimes I go to the gym in my building. And then I just like, I love one of my favorite parks is the, um, the, uh, the park that has Magic Island. Um, the Ala Moana State Park. That is an awesome park to me. I love going around Magic Island, around and around, either walking or jogging. And then my second favorite park is over where, close to where I am now, which is uh, Queen Capulani Park. And we used to train swords over there, but one lap around that is about two miles. So I like to uh, get my fitness on that way. Tell, tell me more about doing swords. I mean, is this is this the ancient Japanese style of sword fighting? Uh, yes, it is, actually. Um, Iaido is, um, we use what they call a, a nodachi or odachi, which translates to field sword. And it's the longer sword. It's longer than um, a katana. So um, not, not a very easy sword to wield. It's kind of a two-handed sword, but we learn to use it with one hand. And... Uh, it's a very difficult yet focused training. So it's, it's basically like a moving meditation. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> that's really good. You're so cultured in so many things, Stephen. And and Stephen, I want to I want to go really deep right here. Um, for me, you know, I I want to I look at everybody as people, and um, I want to inspire love and excellence and hope have you have you ever experienced discrimination and if so what what's an example that you could share that happened to you um i think as a black man in this world you know you discrim you experience discrimination all the time i get it here in hawaii in my old neighborhood i don't get it as much in this neighborhood but in my old neighborhood, when I lived in uh, in Ward Village in Kaka'ako, people would always ask me if I live in the building, you know. Or when I moved in, I was asked for a criminal history report, you know. So, I, you know, there's little things like that that are just like, yeah, you know, just little things that just kind of nip at you, but you have to, to let it go. And for me, one of the things that I do is I do work out. And it allows you to like, if you're angry about something like that, it just, you, you know, you let that go. But then I also, um, I have a therapist, a mental health therapist that I talk to on every two to three weeks, you know, and he, and I can just kind of offload things that might be bothering me to him. And it's not just like a discrimination. It's just, you know, what it feels like to, to be so far away from friends and family uh, that you grew up with. Uh, things like that. So, uh, you know, it's discrimination, but for the most part, I have a great time here. You know, that's only maybe less than 5% of my experience. No, and Stephen, it's it's so good. Uh, I love it when people have mental health experts and professionals, because it, it's so important to maintain that mental and physical health. And what do you have... A solutions or what what do you think society could do to eradicate discrimination or is it something that's just always going to be there um well i think we are we're at a good place right now because everyone is demanding diversity um but we have to get to a point where diversity is about truly being diverse Right now, we say we want diversity, but I think when a black guy says he wants diversity, he wants more black people or black men. Uh, when a black woman says diversity, she wants more black women. Uh, when an Asian guy wants or Asian person wants diversity, they want more Asians uh, represented. So we're all, we say diversity, but that's not actually what diversity is if it's you want more of who you are, right? And so, we have to get to this point where we all have a slice of the pie, right? And I think that that is really what diversity is. 
right? We want these different slices of, uh, you know, this person is pepperoni, this person is uh, a mushroom, you know, this person is extra cheese. You know, we all want this actual slice of the pie. And um, until we get there, it's going to be trouble. But these young uh, kids, I, I think the, the youth are letting it go. I think they're, they're, they're in a different space. No, I like, I like hearing your insights about this. And, and you know, the, the great thing about Hawaii is we have such a diverse um, nationalities of cultures that live in Hawaii. And, and Stephen, I want to ask you about um, one or two actors living or past that inspire you and why? Um, actors living or past? Well, one... Uh, Roger E. Mosley, you know, uh, being able to work uh, closely with him and and also get his stories and and him tell tell me about how you know how he got the job, how um, what his life was while he was here in Hawaii, and just his overall view of the industry where it was, where it's headed. Um, was excellent and all the way up until his memorial, which I went to, um, I flew out to, to LA and I stayed there a little, little bit longer um, so that I could go to his memorial. And I was there and it was just like black Hollywood excellence. You know, it was people that I, faces I hadn't seen um, since I was watching TV in the eighties. And I was like, Oh man, that's the guy from, from Miami vice. That's the guy from, you know, it was just, but they were all there to support him. And uh, I just hope that I can leave a legacy like that. You had told me previously that Roger E. Mosley was a mentor to you. Well, yeah. what are what are some things that he really helped you with? Um, uh, character development. You know, he, he actually, he was in the show, uh, he pitched, <laughs> ironically he pitched a character that was afraid of flying in the helicopter right? <laughs> and he also wanted to be um people were like oh how come tc didn't play your father or something like that he wanted to be uh my barber and he said you know you need a haircut at least once or twice once a week or every two weeks so that way I can be recurring right he was smart like that you know I, he wrote himself a recurring role um, so, uh, he, but he said that would be a way for your character to get more information of what's going on in the streets. Right. So more of your character can be in the storyline and the plot line, you know? So he was always thinking about, um, passing the torch in that way. So I learned to, to make certain demands on the character or, to talk to the writers about certain ideas. And I had the, the courage to do so um, uh, large, in large part by him saying, hey, did you talk to them about this? Or did you talk to them about that? You know, he, he would just call me or leave me a text um, just randomly, just at all, any hour of the day or night, he felt like it. And he would just encourage that uh, I do what I can to make the character the best, character the best that it could be. Well, those are brilliant insights and advice from him, I mean, for sure. And and Stephen, I want to ask you one more thing before we wrap up. When okay. you reflect back on your life so far, what are some things that you're really grateful for? Um, I'm grateful for growing up in two places. Uh, I didn't so much like it when I was a kid because my parents were divorced um, and I grew up uh, half New York. My father was in New York. My mom was in South Jersey and Willingboro. So I was going back and forth from Willingboro to Harlem um, pretty much my whole life. Um, but Willingboro gave me this opportunity to always have a job, right? I worked, I did landscaping. I worked at a CBS warehouse. I, I was a paper boy. I picked up trash. I worked at Great Adventure and worked water rides at Six Flags Great Adventure. You know, I've had so many jobs. Um, and then uh, being in New York gave me this, you know, in New York, it's like, it's kind of a dog eat dog world out there, you know, and it gave me like more courage. Um, and uh, 
you know, I've, I've combined the two, um, that hard work and that courage, and it made me who I am today. Well, Stephen, you are a man of great character and you definitely go beyond the lines. And I'm so happy that you're here with us in Hawaii. And I want to thank you for taking time to join me on the show today. Oh, thank you. This is, this is a, a great opportunity. Anytime I can do something to support uh, I'm, 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 or just sign me up. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com, and my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Stephen and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.